it's a good bonding experience, right? Like me and you are here. The whole day we're spending together, right? Um, doing activities together. It's a bonding experience for you, people you care about, for friends, for family, for couples. You know, um, it's a great bonding experience and teaches you a little bit of survival skills, how to make a fire, how to, let's say one day you're stranded, how to make a tent or, you know, stuff like this. Um, you know, some people when they camp, they go fishing, right? Yeah. How to catch fish. There's a lot of activities in rel related to that yeah. that are good for our survival skills. Um, also, there's, you know, a lot of cool things you can record, right? Such yeah. as animals, birds, chipmunks, you know. Well, they're all in the category of animals, but like, you know what I mean? Like, in here, definitely has some cool animals we can find. Coyotes, foxes. Of course, if you had a safe distance and whatnot, it's cool, right? They're very fascinating creatures and you can learn yeah. a lot from them in certain ways. Let's see what's here. Help us measure and protect Ontario's amazing biodiversity. So we're just in this small little section here. Okay, and it goes all the way through even a fishing section. Learn to fish. Just like we mentioned about fishing, right? What a coincidence. There's a cemetery here. Oh, wow. Oh. Okay. Interesting. You guys want to go to the beach? Guided nature hike. We can even do... Yeah, if there's places to hike, I'm down. I don't know. Actually, no, I don't know about you guys, though. It's kind of far. Um, maybe Sean's brother. I'll hike with him when he comes. If anything, please do not feed the wildlife. Yeah. Now, nah, Sean, do not feed wildlife. It's sad because, like, you know, chipmunks are cute and all, but yeah, I, I actually I don't think a ch chipmunk really I don't see the big deal for a chipmunk but certain animals like foxes coyotes you can't feed because they get comfortable with people right yeah and they'll approach people they're more likely to approach mm -hmm. children and stuff and that increases the risk of attacks mm -hmm. so that's okay. why they they want animals to remain afraid of humans you know but chipmunks I personally would feed if nobody's around Psh, whatever I'll throw it some like all right we'll go now walk on the beach yeah, do you know which direction though? <laughs> Is it it's not far, right? No, it's not that far. I don't think so. Maybe ten minutes or so, I hope. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna go to the beach. Yeah, exactly. And another thing with camping is like it's adventurous. You yeah. know what I mean? You explore new places, you're in different kind of environments, you are learning about the environments, you're seeing new wildlife seeing new views it's adventurous at its core the beach right? you're visiting a new beach seeing what it's like it's just see the problem is if some coyote comes right now my hands are full so it would take me about a few seconds to pull out the spray because I have two sprays on me you know so that's just one downfall of carrying this candy just heads up if I see coyote I may not be able to re react as quickly as I usually could I don't think there's coyotes only at maybe at night and when there's here kind of far away farther coyotes yeah they come out generally at night but they also might come out in early morning um, but it's not common, it's not like something strange to see them in the day. It's just, maybe they might just smell some food nearby or, you know. Yeah. But there's definitely, within this, this is a fairly big park, right? Yeah. And just imagine, um, uh, Kavi, right? Oh, Kavi. Kavi, right? So, one thing, um, me and Sean, right, we, we live by this, uh, right by this trail, bicycle trail little small bicycle trail you know there's some bushes here and there two kilometer bicycle trail there's kids there's people walking their dogs you wouldn't expect any wild animals there i actually didn't expect either my dad had told me like a couple of years ago he saw a coyote there by the um start of the trail which is right by the bellamy go station i have skeptical because well, every time i go there i don't see anything i don't hear anything i've been in there night running in the night never heard anything apparently though Uh 
Yeah, this is a sick place to bike though. Oh, okay, this cool. this this part in particular, this section here, it looks sick. But um, yeah, like just saying, yeah. So in that trail, apparently, uh, when I I joined these groups online, Coyote Watch groups, and I just had a curiosity. I searched Eglinton Go. And what do I see? People saying yes at Eglinton Go. I saw a Coyote there. Eglinton Go. Um, right in the parking lot. Da, da, da. That's exactly where my dad said he saw it. And I was like, hmm, wow. <laughs> and other people are saying. McCowan and St. Clair, which is directly... Remember I said I, I turned back because I heard some shit in the bush and I was like, what the hell? Yeah. It's some sketchy area and some, some food. There's apparently people saying this. Saw a coyote there. Probably the same one. But it makes sense because back there, mm -hmm. there's the bluffs around. And of course, also, this is right beside the Bellamy Go, right? Bellamy Go Station. Coyotes generally travel through the uh, railway corridors. Right, they have good hearing, so they can hear when trains are coming, and get out of the way. You know, kind of like what we're doing right now. We're here, we get up. <laughs> um, so it makes sense. Could have came from somewhere else, and you know, from the go train, wandered into the little trail. Probably alternates locations. But that just shows you if it's just a five-minute walk from our home. Yeah. Imagine a place like this, right? And yeah. that trail is basically in the city, deep in the city where there's buildings everywhere. Mm -hmm. This is not really <laughs> not city any anyway, nothing like city, right? So there's definitely going to be quite a bit of coyotes here. For sure. Particularly around the hiking areas, yeah. which I hope to visit with Sean's brother at some point. But uh, yeah. So yeah, there's definitely coyotes there. You can probably see at any time. Even though they'll come out during the night. I'm sure if you like look into a certain bush you might spot them by the den somewhere you know maybe somewhere in the bushes just chilling just wouldn't get close to it you know but I guess you never seen here right never seen them no no not, not here not. okay but that's also because like Where's he going? Um, what do you see? I think you should probably make a shortcut. Shortcut? Oh, okay. But yeah, that's also because like when you're walking, you're not yeah. focusing on wildlife, right? Probably if you had been searching around for it, I'm more inclined to see it. I think we can go straight back. comes to wildlife, a lot of people will walk right by wildlife and not notice it because they're not actively observing the wildlife, right? They're just focusing on their thoughts or focusing on the people or focusing on where they're going, right? Coyotes are everywhere and we probably walk by them many times. Probably they're chilling in the bushes somewhere in many of the parks we went to. But we're not actively looking for them. We're just in our own conversations, right? Books. Just like those foxes, right? As we were walking at Woodbine, they were directly under us the whole time. And animals, they have a cool ability to just hide so well. It's like, you ever seen a groundhog? I mean, I've nope. seen once, not in like in years though. Okay, been, some of them can be kind of, they look kind of big sometimes. Not like big, big, but they're bigger than you think, right? I saw a groundhog at Thompson Memorial Park and guess what? There was a kind of small looking bush. Yeah. So I saw the groundhog, it go in the bush. I'm like, all right, I can definitely film that. It's not gonna fully hide under that bush. I reach my phone out, it's completely gone. I can't even see a trace of it. And I'm zooming everywhere. I'm like, God damn, this animal can hide. It's that big and it can hide in this bush so well. It really shows that damn, they're experts at yeah. camouflage. Some of these animals are really experts, particularly coyotes too. Crazy. So yeah, sometimes like you could have, when you went Darlington, you could have probably walked by some coyotes. They could have just been somewhere that you didn't notice. Yeah. And some book behind it. Yeah. Yeah, I remember her. You know, Sean, we gotta go one day. It's Algonquin. I would love to go there. We're talking about animals and stuff. And it's a lot more dangerous. Oh, you've been there? You've been there? Yeah, once. 
Yeah, it's doing the length of it. We just went to like a hot, like a small hut, like that. Yeah. I don't know what you'd say, a like paste. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was like doing the bread work. It was awesome. We just caught a bunch of skin and it was nice to get my outdoor class back in high school. That was in the fifth year of doing that. These kind of secluded pathways are, or coyotes are likely to be around actually. Maybe. Who knows? I'll look carefully. Anyways, how is Algonquin compared to um, compared to here? What would you say are the differences? Well, it's, I guess it's good. It's much bigger, a lot more forest area. No, a lot more forest. In Algonquin? Yeah. Okay. But you notice a lot more wildlife too, or just? Uh, I would say so. I would think it's more deer. Mm. But Algonquin is a really good place. I think that's one part of it. People camping are bumping too. Yeah. Is it legal to camp there though? No, it's beaver. Huh? A dam. Yeah, shoot, there might be a beaver. There could be, yeah. There yeah, there definitely would be. And there's beavers even in um the guild, the bluffs, some of the place, um ET Seddon Park. Very likely there could be one here. I guess just well, I went somewhere. I live in the, the lawn, the, the den there. That one, with all those woods on. Oh yeah, yeah, I see it. Interesting. Hmm, I wonder where it went. That's cool. Actually, I wanted to see a beaver. That's one thing that was on my checklist of animals to to, they to photograph. Have crocodiles or something? No, they don't no, have crocodiles. Here? Too cold here. <laughs> no, <we're laughs> yeah, definitely not. You got to go more like um, Africa or something. Yeah, or you want alligators? You got to go. You can tell the chips of the woods down there in that that one. Yeah. You have a good eye. You're like me, actually. When it comes to this, that, that's even I didn't notice that. Shoot, you beat me to it. Nice. I was thinking of coyotes too much, but I didn't focus on the other animals. What is that? That sound? You hear that? Woo, woo. It's either oh, morning, maybe a morning dove. It might be a bird. It's either an owl or a morning dove. There's one animal called the morning dove. It's a small little bird that sounds like an animal. Or it could be that. But it could be an owl too. I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know. Oh well. I guess when you're going. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully on the way back we see it. <clears throat> I have seen an owl owl once with your bro, actually. At Doris McCarthy while we're hiking up the hill. Mm -hmm. But the thing is I was hiking up the hill so there's no way I can reach my phone at that time because, like, I can't, you know, because I have only, I'm, I have one hand on a branch and one hand for balance. So if I reach my phone, like, that would be kind of hard. Now, uh, Kave, you have any idea what that is? You see that sign and there's like a Batman symbol? What is... Yeah, what is it? Just that somebody just draw a Batman? What does that even... Does it have a meaning to it? Okay, this is definitely a prime area for coyotes, man. Nice secluded bushes. Let's see if we can even hear. No, we can't hear them at this time. Probably not. You never know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Definitely gotta watch out for snakes too. I don't want to do that. I almost stepped on one once while I was running. I was talking to my friend Samir and we're running straight. Oh. This looks like a dangerous area to bike, man. I would go slow here. I don't know what's up with people already. going zooming. But, um, yeah, I almost stepped on a snake once. Thankfully, I noticed. Is this the beach down there? Yeah, yeah. That's a nice, nice. beach. Wow. That is really cool. Mm -hmm. Holy cow, that's a big ship. God damn. You obviously, yeah, you can't really see clearly from here, but you could just tell. That's a giant ship. Want a photo? Yeah, I'll take some for you. No alcohol, no dogs. Okay. Kind of reminds me of like Guildwood a bit. Actually, you know what's funny? Guildwood is on the same path if you keep going down. Oh, it runs all the way down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The place like the Guildwood Park Bluff area thing. Yeah. Basically, yeah. if we were to go down and walk probably like 10 hours, we'd probably reach it from here. Oh, yeah. The same path. All, and these, all the way to Scarborough. All the way down. I didn't know Bluff was at a beach. I didn't really know it. I, I know it. I didn't know that's like a big joke. Sort of. mm. You know what I think your brother's crazy enough, he probably would just run from from Gilhood Bluffs all the way here. I feel like that's some I shit he would do. Biking? Biking? Oh biking. yeah. From here. 
I wonder how far of a run that would be actually. That, that must be, I mean, your bro's running speed is pretty fast, but... What about the average person? I, oh, is that what you're searching? No, it's going to be actually... Uh, hmm. Bike. Yeah, Bike taking a couple hours. Yeah, maybe, I guess, three hours maybe? Two hours? Two, three? Okay, if it's a 40, 30 minute drive... It's a nine hour walk. Mm -hmm. But it's a three hour bike ride. Not bad, no. So running would be more like five hours, five, six, probably six hours maybe, I guess. For your bro, that might be more like four. Yeah, four or something. Because his running is pretty... at a crazy level. Alright, Sean, so... I got a challenge for you. Let's see who can skip rocks more and see who can throw it farther. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Something like this seems about right. You first, Sean. Let's see what you got. Yo, when you're ready, you're here. One, two, three. Yo, shit. That was cool. You got three of them. Oh man, I don't even know how to do it though. <laughs> okay, some kind of like sidewards motion. Mm. Alright, let's see what I got. <clears throat> nah, that was epic fail. Alright, wanna see who can throw it farther? Okay, no, you go first. You sure? Yeah, go first. Oh, let's see how far I can throw this hill. All right, that's where you got to beat. Oh shit! Yours actually, I think, took it. All right, yo, okay then. Yours, yours won by a bit. Let's go again. All right, watch now. Ooh, yo, you're not beating that, bro. Okay, it's even, directly equal. Shit, yo, damn, we're evenly matched. All right, ready? Okay, one, two, three. Yo, I think mine's a little bit farther, a tad bit ahead. <laughs> ready, I got you. Sean's about to skip some rocks, let's see this. One, two, three. Whoa, that was actually... That flew. See, the first, the first time it bounced, it flew, right? That was so cool. Here, try this one. Yeah, let's see, yo, let's see this. One, two. So, Sean, what's the plan? We going up up this thing? We're going up this hill. All right, just watch out for ticks. Oh. Who wants to go first? Up this thing? Okay. I'll film you. So. Me first? Or you want me to go? I go. You wanna go? I'll just go first. Okay. And see yo, we'll see what Sean got. Yeah yeah. Okay. Alright yo. Sean's just feeling it, feeling it. Feels stable. Okay. He's balanced. He's in position. Yeah yeah. Making sure his grip is good. I don't know what this string is. I don't trust it, but... Okay. Looks like it's stable. 
Yeah, Sean's made it. Damn. The sky is beautiful, yo. Look at that, you know, with the sunset and stuff. See that? The clouds. You know, the sky. It's like kind of like a pinkish kind of shade to it too, right? That looks sick. Pinkish, purplish. That is awesome. Wow. What a view. Alright, Sean, you ready to play some cricket? Let's do it, yo. So I do this, right? Yeah, so you just show, try to hit it. So basically, let's pretend that right behind you, directly beside your your leg, is like a target. Okay, they call it the wicket, right? And if this ball hits that target, then you're you're basically out, right? You know, in baseball, you get three strikes. Yeah. In cricket, you only get one, well, unless in a real game though. If you're playing for fun, it doesn't really matter, but. In a real game, it's one strike, boom. The moment it hits that target, the wicket, you're gone, right? So, basically your objective is the batsman. If we're talking an actual game, it would be to score points, right? So, if you were to hit it, it's here in a stadium, and you were to hit it, and I'm gonna estimate, you see where those bushes are over there? Yeah. If you were to hit it and it went in the bushes, that could be, um, if it didn't touch the ground, that would be considered a six if it touched the ground that would be considered a four and these points add up for the game six four you know if you hit it and it didn't touch any boundary you would have to run back and forth and each time you run you get a point one two you know so let's say if you hit it and it was far enough and you went and ran once that's one point you know basically so as a batsman in an actual game your objective is to score points however um, for practice is just to try to prevent it from hitting your target so just try to hit the ball and protect the target which is not there but the let's say imaginary target for now and uh, my objective is to hit that imaginary target okay. all right Sean so let's give this a go Are right, you ready? I'm gonna pitch it right from here. Um, yeah. Ready? Set. Oh, it's just my warm-up pitch. You know what I mean? Hey, that was a good shot though. So Sean, one one tip. Um, what I would say is get into your cricket stance. What is that? So what you the stance you were in just now. Right? Okay, it's not bad. But you can see that um your your legs are a bit close, right? For cricket it's largely also dependent on footwork shifting you know so the closer if the feet are close it's hard to shift your feet then rather than being wide and you're also going to be more likely to be off balance so yeah just like keep it like one leg in front one leg behind kind of thing but just a little bit wider and should be good let's try take two yep yep a lot of it is also based off of the forearm forearms and the legs basically the whole body but predominantly those two generates the uh, power and the technique over the shots all right ready I'm gonna pitch from right here oh that was good <laughs> 